Wen Lee coming to you from Fate of the Empress. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some principles about pets. And this video is brought to you thanks to Kinsey, my mentee. I promised her a video on some pet choosing principles. So am I going to give any specific recommendations for pets? I'm sorry to disappoint you, no. But I will give you some principles and strategies to think about when choosing pets for your heroes <laughs> because this is like there's always new pets coming up and also I don't know what your team is like or how you how you play so I'm not going to make any specific recommendations but I will tell you some principles to help you choose pets for yourself okay so Going into pets, principle number one, you need to determine what your hero does and what your hero needs. So what your hero does is what is their skill? Like, is their skill healing? Is their skill attack? Is their skill something else? You know, do they have anything special about them that is going to tip the scales for you on your team or is going to be a good strategy that you want to take advantage of? So here's an example. I am running Guayguza, and Guayguza has a lot of ACC. Like, doesn't have, a, not really like an attack hero, but he has a lot of ACC and he's doing other things for me, like keeping the other team from damaging me or healing when I damage them, that kind of thing. So he's a really important member of my team, and his job is sort of to keep the other team under control. And he uses ACC as part of that equation. So if I'm going to put a pet on him, I'm going to try to line up a pet that is going to support that goal of having Guayguza help me repress the other team in some way. So there's a few different pets that would work for this. I picked Reindeer for right now because it has a chance of freezing based on the ACC of the carrier. So... His AC is pretty high, so my reindeer has a pretty good chance of freezing someone or more than one member of the other team, depending on their EVA. So that's an example. This is just an example. This is not a recommendation because other pets would work really well for Grey Guza. Um, anything that's ACC based. Let's see. What else is ACC? Oh, Robo Bunny. So Robo Bunny is ACC based and there's like a few more that are ACC based. Um sometimes other bunny. Anyway, so you look through your pets and you try and find a pet that is going to mesh with that hero's what skill, what it what that hero does and also with its special things that it needs. So Guayguza needs ACC and he's working to repress the other team. So I'm going to try to pick a pet that needs a lot of ACC to function <laughs> or gives him even more like, um, gosh, there is one that gives even more ACC. See, this is why I don't make recommendations because I can't even keep all my pets straight. I have to carefully read through my hero skills <laughs> and then carefully read through the pet skills and then match them up. Okay, so you get the idea. Read through your hero skills and then look carefully. So here are places that you should look carefully on the pets to determine if it's the right pet for that hero. One is all attributes. Like what kind of attributes does it have? <sighs> And then the second would be, what kind of skills does it have? So this is Charming Bunny. It uses 50% chance to decrease a certain percentage of attack when under critical attack. <clears throat> Effective twice every round maximum, lasting two rounds. So Charming Bunny is a defensive pet. It's helping keep you from getting damaged. And that's supported by the fact that it has the hide skill next, which increases the defense by 750 by, you know, each time. And when you, when you put this pet on and this skill is active, this hide skill is active, that actually increases the skill of your hero. 
So if you have a hero that needs a lot of defense and you need to protect that hero to keep it alive to do stuff for you, then this might be a good choice or something similar. So look at the second skill, which is bold. So it gets a, an HP boost at, uh, you know, skill unlock advance. So it, you know what advance is. This is the advance. So when you advance it, more skills and more skill levels unlock. The fourth skill is tear, which increases the pet defense. And then the last skill is um, increase crit damage resist by 20%. So this is some, this bunny is some, somebody, some, some pet that you would really want to put on a hero that needs a lot of protecting. So you look at their primary skill, look at their secondary skills and see who they would fit in with, right? So if you're going to do a gourmet like Jia Bao Yu, like maybe something like this bunny would would be helpful. Like if you had this bunny and you didn't have other options that were a better option, then it would definitely be better to put this bunny than Shiba Inu on Jia Bao Yu, right? So look at the purpose of the hero, look at their skills, look at how to take advantage of that and match that with the pet with their skills and also their general attributes. Okay, so let's talk about Peacock for a second. I have seen people use Peacock for a lot of different heroes, not just Jiao Chan. So anyone on your team, if you have Peacock and you're like, what do I do with Peacock? Anyone on your team that is so essential that you can't possibly chance losing them, (laughs) then Peacock is the right choice, right? So if you have Peacock and you're able to uh, advance it a bit, it's very effective at helping you have a second chance at beating the other team. Um, <clears throat> I, I know some people who put it on their MC. I know some people have put it on their attacking main. Like, a lot of people put it on Jiao Chan, but that's not the only answer. And it really depends on, like I said before in other videos, your context like, if you have plenty of peacocks and you can advance them and you have some hero, some part of your team that is indispensable, then that's the right place to put peacock, right? If you don't have peacock then and you don't plan on spending a lot of money in the game, then I would definitely skip peacock and do something else, <laughs> right? So it really depends on your context. And I think that especially if you're free to play or nearly free to play, that it's really important for you to use the resources that land in your lap. So if you end up, I still use hamster, like, or not hamster. Oh my goodness. Chinchilla. Thank you. Sorry. (laughs) I still use this cute little chinchilla. I have the division number one chinchilla because no one else uses them, but he's so good. (laughs) Like, Let's see, what's his skill? He heals. So a chance to trigger crit healing effect. Double healing value when HP is lower than 50%. So he oftentimes saves my um, Zhuangzhou. So don't estimate free pets. Don't underestimate free pets because they are really great too. Like I have this... Bifong that's godly, but I did not pay for it, y'all. I played Desert Tales like a mad person and upgraded it like a mad person and ended up with a godly pet with a gift of 150. That fell in my lap. Like, it did not... Well, it fell in my lap with effort. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I was a free-to-play player at that time, and I decided that if I was going to have a godly pet, I was going to work hard for it. So I grinded a lot on Desert Tales, despite the fact that it was not very fun. And I did end up with my amazing lock, so, which means fire. Okay, so, like, I'm, I'm saying, like, you don't have to pay for pets to be effective. What you need to do is pair your pets correctly. 
So if you have an attack based hero, look at you, this the second, you know, uh, and further the secondary skills of that pet also along with the primary skill. So the secondary skill is rip, which adds attack, a lot of attack actually. So the, and the higher you can advance that, the more that skill intensifies. So the the third thing that you want to look at besides your hero skills and the pet skills and how those mesh and the, that stuff is you want to look at how easy is this going to be for me in my context to upgrade because the difference between you know level three <laughs> which i think is where you get stuck if you don't have extra um epics of the same pet if you're doing fabled if you get stuck at three then you're going to be stuck and you're not going to get these extra bonuses if you can advance your pet continually up to 20 and and you know i think don't i think this godly pet lets you go past 20 but let's take uh this little dude for example okay so that's his totem stuff okay so plus 20 is his top so if you can advance it to plus 20 and get all of the uh, advantages of your um, primary skill and your secondary skills for your pet, that's probably going to be better in most cases <laughs> than having a flash that you can only get to level three or having a peacock you can only get to level three. So um, that's something else to really consider when you're picking pets for your team, like really pick pets that are going to be reasonable for you to upgrade because here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand going forward you know getting started in the game and going forward is that these advancing materials as long as you do perfect resets okay so just like hang hang tight with me for just a couple more minutes as long as you do perfect resets you're going to get all your resources back out of that pet and what that means is Let's say you've been playing for like a year and you, you, you know, you have your pets up to plus 20 and you have all of the ripe ginseng you need. You have all the mature ginseng you need. You have a lot of fabled pets to feed into that pet. Suddenly you have more resources available, <laughs> maybe some more ingots. Your kids are through um, school and you don't have to deal with that so much anymore. You can, you know, slow down on giving them classes things like that if you're free to play then you can start devoting a little more resources to getting these pets that you get in lucky treasure hunt so and there's also events that you can collect the eggs from let me show you so you can collect these eggs from different events also and just hang on to them until you're ready to choose a specialty pet so i think that that's other than like a godly pets are a little bit different because once you have a godly pet, you don't have to have like another godly pet of the same kind. Um, but they do take more resources to upgrade. So that's, that's the caveat there. Like you don't have to feed a godly eagle owl into a godly eagle owl to get them to upgrade, but <laughs> you are going to need, and this is why my fiend, my, but Bifong is still not fully upgraded is eventually you're going to need a lot of these divine fruit and a lot of ripe ginseng, a lot. <laughs> and then, you know, five fabled pets to feed into it to get to 16 to 17. So, you know, until you have like all your ginseng resources, <laughs> until you are able to collect divine fruit, you know, maybe it would be a better investment for you to be just upgrading the free to play pets that you have and investing in that so that their skills are unlocked fully and you're taking advantage of what you have. So that's a thought from when. I hope that this is helpful. I hope that this makes sense. I'm just giving you principles instead of giving you like specific advice on which pet to choose. Just remember those three things your hero skills and needs, your pet's skills and secondary skills and what they offer, and then also what's available to you and what's easy for you to acquire. So those are my three standards for picking a pet. I hope that 
you can hit the ground running with that and have a great night. Thanks for watching.